Hey, it's Paul from HowToNetwork.com. I'm getting a lot of emails and questions from members and non-members about how to get started in cloud networking. I think cloud networking is the most exciting career available at the moment. And um, if I was starting again in IT, instead of running my uh, online business and writing books, I would be going for cloud networking, which I'll explain why as we go through. But um, yeah, I just wanted to give you an outline of how you can get started as well and just give you a few tips. If you've never heard of me, I uh, run a couple of online websites and um, I've been teaching IT for a number of years now. And I used to work as an IT consultant and work for Cisco Systems, Cisco TAC in the UK uh, before starting my own company. So I started knowing nothing. So if you're starting out, then you can achieve the same sort of things or better. If you want to check out my websites, I'll give you a link at the end, actually. HowToNetwork.com, 101labs.net, and in 60 dayscom are my three main sites. Uh, please like the uh, video and subscribe. Smack the bell if you want to hear more. But on to more important things. I'm sure you've heard of cloud computing, but I just thought I'd put up the definition here from dictionary.com. The practice of using a network of remote servers hosted on the internet to store, manage and process data rather than a local server or a personal computer. So obviously, um, if you ever worked at a company and saw any of the IT stuff, you'd have your personal computers wherever they were at your desk. Where's my heart? You'd have your computer at the desk, which obviously connects at the cable. You'd have your uh, colleagues' computers as well. And somewhere along the line, it would connect to a server that would be offering um, your email services, your um, web, uh, FTP, etc., etc. Well, what's happening now with the cloud is um, we may well have a local server, but all of the important stuff is being run here by a large company such as um, Amazon, Google or um, Microsoft and they're taking over a lot of the important functions from your business. I'll explain why in a moment. You're probably already using the cloud even if you work from home or have a mobile device, the Google platform, you're sharing or downloading files from uh, online cloud storage uh, such as Dropbox, um, Netflix, you're streaming, wherever you are in the world there'll be a local um, cloud delivery service for your Netflix or your Amazon Prime, uh, stuff like this. Why do companies, small businesses, large businesses want to move to the cloud? Basically, there's a, a list of um, reasons why uh, when you come to do your certification and you'd, you'd answer these in the exam. But generally, it's flexible and it scales to your needs. So if you want to increase the RAM on your server, you'd have to order it. You'd have to wait for it to arrive. You'd have to boot down your server so have an outage normally on a weekend. Install it, um, reboot it. Same with adding more uh, space to it. On a cloud server, generally you've got a little marker like this, and it'll have one CPU, two, three, four. And all you do is grab hold of that marker and slide it across. So now you want four CPUs. That's it because it's all running uh, using virtualization. No need to reboot, no downtime. And the other thing is, if you're running some powerful applications and you want to scale up, and then you could scale back down to one or two or whatever you want. If you're testing new software applications, you can quickly de uh, test and deploy them without having to completely upgrade your infrastructure. The other thing is savings. You don't have your maintenance person on board. You don't have your backup engineer and all the other support engineers that go into running all this infrastructure. So it becomes a bit of a no-brainer. So this is a pretty common um, fig. If you want to pause the video of some of the um, application services and benefits of using the cloud platform. Also, your business continuity. You've got multiple uh, copies of the data that can be spread across um, different physical locations. So even if there's an emergency or an earthquake or a flash flood somewhere, your data is stored in other locations. Uh, really robust security on the cloud platforms as well. Built in, 
already and then you can enhance your security sometimes if you pay more and sometimes if you just add the features to it so um, here's a uh, impact on businesses if you have to present a business case to your boss about some of the improvements and you can actually give them figures if you go to the Azure website Amazon and I think Google you can put in your current infrastructure requirements like uh, whatever it may be 10 servers uh, so many apps so, so so many people it will do a calculation of what you're paying now and what you would pay if you were on the cloud and often it says it's a fraction of the price like 25% of whatever you're paying I just googled uh, cloud engineer salaries Obviously, some of these are for people with experience, some of them are for entry level. But these are the kind of average salaries you're looking at getting. They can be up to a million dollars if you are a cloud architect and got loads of experience. And obviously, it goes down to entry level stuff. Now, there's something really important. Now, this hasn't happened since the 1990s. We had um, a low supply of engineers and we had a massive demand so at around say the year say the year 2000 it was still going on so it was very easy to get a career with very little experience and you start off on good money now what happened after the, the um, internet bubble the bubble burst there was too many engineers and our salaries went down significantly so at Cisco there was people in the in on U, the equivalent of UK at around 100 120,000 dollars and they were coming in to work for around 35,000 because the market had just dried up well what's happened now is there's a falling supply of engineers there's not enough qualified engineers and so the salaries are shooting up as you just saw in the previous uh, slides I put up so this is a great time because there's um the requirement for you to get in has dropped you need less and less experience so um, job postings that include the term cloud computer and a cloud engineer have gone up 27 percent since 2015 according to indeed which is a web job site basically they're saying as companies move away from on-site to a cloud infrastructure there's not enough engineers to support it new york times tech companies new and old clamor to entice cloud computing experts obviously experts all the way down to um, professionals, all the way down to associates, all the way down to apprentice level. Uh, LinkedIn or Facebook can offer an engineer with a few years experience, so not a beginner, obviously close to a million dollars to Mr. Chavez. Um, you can read that in your own time even for internships they're offering 45,000 for three months there's the demand is that that high the three big players at the moment are Google I know there's more so you can you can do your own research Google platform is a big player AWS and Microsoft Azure AWS is in front but the uh, gap between the three is closing quite significantly so it's just a, a matter of you of looking at the three deciding which one would suit you better you may have an Amazon a base near to you or it could be a Google Azure or you might want to move so these are the kind of streams that all three are offering these streams great news for us foundation so this is like your low level entry level for this particular vendor so they expect you to know about their technology but only at a basic level and around half is uh, the vendor and around half is general sorry cloud knowledge and then you'll choose one of the three paths once you've done your foundation architect operations and developer uh, and obviously there's a speciality routes as well same for uh, Azure this is slightly out of date they've just updated the exams but the tracks are the same developers IT professionals, so you're not really doing any coding, and then architects, where you're designing and planning the entire infrastructure. And then Google, architect, engineer, and data. So that all three have got three main streams, 
and then all three have got specializations this is my recommendation so you start off here with um, your basic network knowledge and I'll put TCP but all kind of networking basics I recommend you start off with CompTIA Network Plus which also includes cloud understanding but you learn all your TCP IP uh, so your TCP IPv4 IPv6 security layer 2 which is your VLANs and trunking still need to know all that uh, wireless uh, all your basics and then you move on to uh, after that you move on to cloud essentials you've already uh, covered some of the cloud essentials with your CompTIA Network Plus you're already around 10-15% through this will give you a foundation and then you'll go to a fundamentals so you can choose one or all three. You could be, you could do a fundamentals in Azure or um, Amazon. I don't think Google offer a foundation exam. That might change, but at the moment I couldn't find one. So you can choose the Azure fundamentals, as it says here, which has just gone live on our website, and the Azure Cloud Practitioner. So this is these are baby exams. You need to know a bit about cloud, which you already would from your foundation cert and then a bit about these platforms not too technical after that you'll be able to decide which is your favorite platform and then you go into the associate which you can choose Google and Microsoft or um, Amazon or you could choose a speciality I haven't checked to see what you need as a prerequisite for any of these you probably would need some sort of pre prerequisite and then you'll go into one of the specializations a lot of people are obviously choosing security um, because of the money and how interesting it is. So how do you get prepped? Uh, learn your networking, as I said, with the two CompTIA Foundation certs. Then you get free trial accounts, minimum normally 30 days, and you can do a lot of hands-on stuff playing with the technology, which is great fun. Follow along with video training. I say video training because books on cloud platforms tend to be out of date really quick because they change the layout of the desktop and they add and remove stuff do some follow along labs to so find somebody um, video training who's shown you what to do and then you copy what they've done then take practice exams so you can prepare yourself for the real thing um, yeah on howtonetwork.com we've got most of these courses including the foundation and intermediate for CompTIA Amazon, um, Microsoft and Google. So please come out and check uh, the website out. I've got an offer for you in a moment for $1. Oh, here it is. So you can get 30 days access. Have a look at the website first. Then there's a special URL, howtonetwork.com forward slash YouTube, where you get um, a month's access for $30. And we coach you through all of these exams. And it's about 50% practical for the um, um, foundation exams. Practice exams, live Cisco racks if you want to play with Cisco kit, expert support on the forum, career training and exam strategy support. So I hope that's given you something to uh, think about. Uh, any questions, there's a help desk on howtonetwork.com. Otherwise, I'll see you on the forum. Thanks for listening.